Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 284 of Weekly Poker Hand. I wanna thank you for being here with me today. We're gonna to be taking a look at a hand from 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 euro. Very, very, very big game that took place in Montenegro. This was put on by Triton Poker and Party Poker Live. They do great work. Make sure you check out their stream. It is amazing, enlightening, educational, fun. It's everything you'd want in a poker show. So here we have Tan Juan, we're gonna call him Tan. Tan raises from early position. He makes it 20,000 out of his 1.1 million stack. A little bit loose, Jack Eight of Clubs is certainly a somewhat splashy hand, but maybe, I mean like if you are going to get a little bit loose, the hands you typically want to add to your range are gonna be hands like 6-5 suited, 9-7 suited, 10-8 suited, Jack-8 suited, right? These are hands that have potential, they flop well enough, and it's fine to get a little bit out of line with them. That said, most of the players are playing relatively shallow stacked, only 500,000 deep with a with an 8,000 big blind, so about 60 big blinds. And as stacks start to get a little bit shallower, you need to tighten up a little bit with the loose raises in general. But like Jack-8 of clubs is a fine hand to get out of line with. Folds around to Makita Babzikowski, one of the absolute best players in the world. On the button, he flats with 6-5 of diamonds, which I think is perfectly viable. He could fold. He could 3-bet. He can kind of do whatever he wants there. I don't think either play is particularly great or particularly terrible. And they see a flop. Heads up. Makita is 500k deep at the start of the hand, so 60 big blinds, like I said. Flop is going to come. Ace, Jack, Five. So, two hearts. Ace Jack five, two hearts. Tan Juan flops middle pair. Petzikowski flops bottom pair. Tan has a backdoor flush draw as well. So, middle pair, backdoor flush draw. I think this is a pretty nice hand to check um, for, for uh, Tan with the middle pair, backdoor flush draw. You can easily check call. If you bet, you're not going to get raised all that often, so that's nice. But... Uh, if you are going to develop a checking range, very often the best hands to check are the medium strength hands that can very easily check call flop and can very often check call turn. So I don't think he has to have a checking range. I think just betting here somewhat frequently is fine. But if you are going to develop a checking range, this is one of the absolute first hands you want to be checking with because you can check it and you just know you're not folding it. He does bet though. He makes a small bet of 20,000 for about a third pot. And now Badzikowski's in an interesting spot. So normally, any pair is good. Like, you're not trying to fold a pair on the flop. However, on ace, jack, five, two hearts, six, five is going to have a horribly difficult time realizing its equity by the river. Because it's going to fold to any turn bet, right? And it's going to fold to any river bet. And the problem is that Tan may be checking a lot of hands like ace, x on the turn sometimes, or jack, x on the turn just looking to check call, so you don't even get to bluff very often either. So when it does happen to check down, you lose. And when you face a bet, well, you just have to fold. So when the board comes two high cards and a low card like this, and you happen to have the low card and the high card should decently, or should hit your opponents decently well, you either need to fold or raise, I think. This is one of those odd spots where even with a pair, your hand, it just isn't actually that good. Even if a six or a five comes on the turn, you could still be beat by ace jack or pocket jacks, right? So, as you think Tan's strategy is looser, you should be more inclined to raise. If you think Tan's strategy is very tight preflop, meaning he just hits this board a little bit harder, you should probably go for the fold. So, that's how I'm thinking about this scenario. And it seems like Tan is a little bit loose. So, given he is a little bit loose, if he has jack eight of clubs, he could have queen nine of clubs, he could have eight, six of clubs, right? If he has lots of hands like this, raising makes it to where, well, when you have the best hand, you just win the pot, clearly. But you're going to make your opponent fold out hands that do have equity, that could bet the flop and then continue putting pressure on you, denying you your equity. So facing a 20k bet, Makita does go for the raise. I, I think that is fine and reasonable. Notice that he's going to get to bluff on some turns, like a heart is clearly a card that he would like to keep bluffing on. Um... Tan's not going to suspect a six to be good ever. So if you do happen to be against a hand like Ace King, you're going to get called a lot. You're going to pay it off a lot whenever you do happen to get there. And now back to Tan, he has to put in forty-five thousand into a pot that's going to go up to one hundred eighty. I think this is a pretty easy call. Notice he much would have preferred just check calling a twenty k bet, right? But 
And that's the downside of betting the marginal made hands is when you get raised, you're in a rough spot. Without a backdoor flush draw, I think Tan could certainly consider just folding immediately. P pretty much for the same reason that Mikita could consider folding to the small flop bet because without a backdoor flush draw, your hand's just going to realize this equity really, really, really poorly. Because if you just face any turn bet, you're done. If you face any river bet, you're done. And if it gets checked down, you lose a decent chunk of the time. And this is a scenario, though, like I said, where I would not expect Makita to be raising the flop all that often to begin with, just because Tan should have a whole lot of hands like ace-jack, aces, jacks, ace-five suited, right? So Bad Zikowski really doesn't get to raise all that often. So when he does raise, what does that mean? Well, if you know anything about your opponent, this is where tendencies become really important because some people's raising ranges in this spot are only bluffs, whereas other players' raising ranges are only value hands. And if you know that about your opponent, then life becomes way easier because if you know his range is all bluffs, you can just call and then fold out on a heart. That said, I don't think these players know their opponents all that well, and even if they do, I'm sure they're not making just like egregiously bad mistakes. All right, turns of two hearts. Tan is probably going to lose his pot. He checks. Makita needs to go for a bluff. He needs to. He has a hand that is losing to all made hands for the most part. And he has a range that certainly could contain some heart draws, right? So I like a bet. Pot's 188. I think a bet of about two-thirds pot, so call it 125 is pretty nice. Notice that'll set up a river shove. He has 410k behind, so if he bets... 100, let's say 115 here to make our lives easy. He'll have 300 left. Pot will go up to about 315. I think that's the play. Bet turn and jam river. That's going to certainly put Tan in a tough spot with all of his non-flush hands, which should be a pretty big chunk of his range. So he does go, uh, the one that made it easy on us, 115. And now Tan just has to fold. He has no option here. And, you know, if he did take the line I would have done of checking the flop, there's no guarantee Bad Zikowski would have even bet the flop. But if you did bet the flop and the turn, you're still probably folding. But at least in that scenario, you lose 45,000 fewer euros. And that kind of thing adds up. I mean, it's, it's not... I know it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Well, I mean, 45,000 euros is a lot, but five big blinds is not all that much. But if you find spots like this where you just end up losing five big blinds more than your opponents on a regular basis, that adds up to a ton long-term. And Tan does let it go, and I, I don't really see any other option for him. Sometimes there's just not a whole lot you can do, and once he bets the flop and gets raised, he's just losing that pot. So that's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. If you did, click like, click subscribe. That goes a long way to helping me. So if you enjoy all this free content I put out for you, do something that's free for uh, you to do for me. Click like, click subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks a lot. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Now I'll be back next week with another fun episode of Weekly Poker Hand.